How much you charge for a gig or a job could be the difference between success and failure. I myself have recently priced myself out of an opportunity. It was a good opportunity. I say that in quotation marks because two years ago I would have jumped at the opportunity. I would have gone to church and said, thank you Lord for such a chance. But the moment that is not my level, I have passed that level. As a beginner, you do not have such luxuries. You need reviews and fast. What's up everyone and welcome to my channel about making money online through freelancing. In this video, I'll be talking about how much you should charge for your services as an African freelancer and why getting reviews is super important. Before you continue, please don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you get much more content. I have a lot more coming up. Forgive me for being away for about 10, 12 days, but I promise that I'll be bringing out much more content quicker. So stay tuned. As a freelancer, as an African freelancer, reviews are your best friends. Zero reviews equals zero credibility. You could be the greatest writer, the greatest video editor, the greatest web developer, graphic designer. But if you're on Upwork, if you're on Fiverr and have no reviews, people will not trust you. I've talked about how trust is important in business transactions. So you need to get those reviews and fast. And pricing has a big role in helping you get those reviews early. The power of reviews, testimonials, recommendations far exceed the world of freelancing. There are Google reviews where people see if something is good enough, a restaurant or whatever is good enough. Amazon reviews, people used to determine if they should buy an item. There is Facebook reviews, testimonials, websites. Those are super important. And I even have a real life story to back that up. I recently learned about a company that helps you ship items from the US to Ghana. Previously, I would have been very skeptical of such a promise, but I saw so many positive reviews on Twitter and Instagram that, wow, these guys, just a week, I bought this from the US and it's down with me right now. Wow, this was so efficient. Wow, it's so affordable. Wow. So I was like, hmm, so many positive reviews. I've tried this for myself. There's something I want to buy that's only available in the US for a good price. So I've decided to use them. Even though there are many things they could improve about their service or how they run their business, since I'm in the digital marketing space, so I understand customer service, content marketing, etc. etc. Even though it's not the best, but the recommendations, the reviews have made me feel safe that my things are in capable hands, in hands that have done it before. Hands that have shipped items from the US to Ghana many, many times. So I am very comfortable. I'm not worried at all. And in due time, you find out what I bought. And that is the picture I want to paint for you. If you have testimonials on your profile, on your Fiverr, or on your Upwork, you have testimonials and reviews that, wow, this guy did a great job for me. I'll be coming back for more. Anyone who you propose to will look to her like, hmm, he's done a good job for this guy. I think I should give him a chance. It's so much easier for people to give others a chance when it's clear that they've done the job before. That's life, that's just the way it is. As a newbie, you need to get such social proof to be able to um, get the ball rolling. If that company has zero reviews, I would never have used them, to be honest. And that's how freelancing is. So pricing have to be much more flexible in the beginning. Yes, you may be a pro at what you do. You may be like, hey, I'm going to charge $50 an hour because I've done some amazing things before. You won't get anyone because you're competing with people who are charging $30 an hour, $20 an hour, who have a long list of testimonials and reviews and a job success score. I'm talking in terms of upward job success score, top rated client, top rated plus freelancer, 5K and in 12 months, like people are heavily stacked in terms of the stats. So you have to humble yourself. And if someone is trying for a job $20, you can say something like, I'm new, I will normally charge more than this, but since I'm new on this site and I want to get some positive reviews, I promise to give you twice the work. I promise to give you the best work I can give you to get the reviews. I'm even willing to receive a little bit, a little bit lower for my normal asking price. 
So please give me a chance and I promise you, I will impress you. That's the angle that our proposals have to cut in as a beginner. That you will outwork any other experienced person. You will do twice the output that they are willing to do and for a slightly discounted price because you need those reviews. So that is how you should aim to price your items as a freelancer. My first job on Apple was $5. That was September 2020. A $5 job, I didn't have an answer job to December. But that time I didn't know how to use Upwork. My first job on Fiverr was a $20 job. I think the person asked for $25. But I was like, I will do this job for you for $20. And that's what helped me get the, the gig. So that being said, do not charge for peanuts, please. Do not say, I'll do this one hour worth of job for $2, for $3. You may get, you may underprice yourself out of a job. I don't know if that makes sense. You know, I don't know if that makes sense, but if what I'm looking for, and I might pay 50 CDs for it, and you get up and say, I'll do it for you for five CDs, I'll seriously question your credibility and your ability to do that job. So that's what you have to keep in mind when you are setting prices. That's what you have to keep in mind when you are bidding for jobs and always try to be a bit lower and your proposal promise that you outwork the others who are more established and relaxed because the more established ones that relax me back then at the beginning every day i'm on upwork every day i'm on fiverr looking for jobs to apply for now i don't even open the sites that much because i already have too much to do so you are just competing against people who are hungry, but the people who have made it are not as hungry as you are. So in your proposal, you have to tell them that I'm going to outwork the others and give you a great result. And that is how you should price your proposal strategy. Thank you for making this far in the video. I have one more video in the proposal stage, second stage of freelancing coming up, and that will be about what you should do if someone replies or responds to your proposal. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't and click the bell notification icon as well. And see you on the next one. Take care. Don't forget and don't hesitate to hit the comment section with your questions. Am I rhyming? See you on the next one. Peace, peace, peace.